out loud here to offset idea. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but would make a big difference in talking offset minimum. Probably about three eighths of an inch. But in order to actually get an offset to work, you need to do about an inch. About that. But 11 washers seem to be the magic number on uh, these two. And for the sake of just getting it done at the moment, I think that's what I'm going to do on all four wheels. Spacers. It's just shy of an inch. I'd say one more washer would be an inch, which makes sense. About 80,000, 83,000. It's one idea I've had to make that spacer adapter offset thing. That's what I'll patent it as spacer offset thing. Simply put a plate here and here, so you have two plates like this, just a hole through it. Wouldn't even need any extra metal on it, but you could put some on. You could also make two identical plates. Be like a plate, just a threaded barrel welded on or machined on. And then that way I could stick one down in here, tighten it with a bolt from one side, so into the frame, flip the other one over. And that could be the one that accepts the uh, the tilter, or just the screw, depending on which side is going on. So on this side, it'd just be a screw, on that side, it'd be the tilter. But this one, if I make a tilter, I'm going to need to probably do an offset as well, or at least permanently attach a spacer to the frame rather than relying on the bolts, because tilter would have to thread through it. And again, I think the maximum tilter I can get away with would be about half an inch. So here, you can see that clearance that's needed. And somebody was asking me, we, you were asking me if these wheels would work on your timpani, which have identical frames. Yes and no. If I make some of those offsets, I'll be sure to see if you want one. As you can see with my cheap calipers here, pulling just shy of an inch, so really even putting a half inch thread in there is just a tad overkill. Here offset would really be helpful, but not needed if I can make this a permanent part of the frame. And that could be as simple as Loctite and threading it in, but I'd need a larger thread. It'd have to be big enough to allow the half inch thread to go through. This right here, this boss, is where the hanger arm would attach if this was set up German. So if you look over here, you can see where the hanger arm is attached with a nut. Same deal here. Spacers hold up the wheels. 
seems to work really well. Back here, below the barrel nut. This is where I'm gonna put that hardened plate or bronze, still haven't decided. Have the master screw, some, looks like maybe a 5 8 inch thread. Uh, other plans include taking the hoop and the struts off, labeling where they came from, obviously, so I can put them back. And that way I can work on just the base if I need to, like the wheels. But also I do plan to build, fabricate and design a uh, tuning gauge, which I'll need to take this entire strut and machine some holes. And the central hole right there, everything having to be certain diameters to line up correctly. Hardest part, I think, honestly, because I don't have experience doing it, is going to be making the arm that goes back and forth. This is what paint looks like when you don't prep your aluminum. It's a mess. 3D printed a bit that I could make out of steel and weld to the frame that would allow tilters and an offset and a new thread for installing the casters. But basically it would hatch there. And I don't think it would look terrible actually. The only real challenge is welding cast steel can be a bit tricky. The other option is to make something that is more machine and gets bolted on, which would be easier to if somebody else wanted that piece on their frame. Now the plan is to weld that on like that, already machined, make it just proud of the original casting so there can be a weld bead going along there as well, so a weld bead on four sides. And I'd make two different designs of this, one with a through hole that's threaded to either half inch or three quarter or something similar with tilters. And then either a three eighth inch through hole to attach a bolt to the casters, which would be easy, or a threaded hole for the casters. And I'm leaning towards the easier option just because it doesn't really matter. Two common problems, three common problems on these old drones in order of easiest to fix to hardest to fix. Easiest to fix, casters, the wheels. Um, when they made these, they didn't tend to put the locking casters on. When I say locking casters, I mean total locking casters that don't spin. So this spins. Now it's not super tight right now. But now it doesn't spin. I'm not going to tighten it anymore because it doesn't need to be tight right now. But that keeps the drone from wobbling around and moving when you put your foot on it. It's not a requirement, but it's what makes the difference between a nice drum and a good drum. A nice drum will have those locking casters. And they're not that much more expensive. These wheels, uh, I might put a link in the description. They're about $10 or $11 each. I need to replace the wheels on my personal drums. So they do wear out. So the way these casters work, you have your standard brake, it keeps the wheel from turning. What that does is it puts a little bit, there you go, puts that little metal piece onto the wheel, keep it from spinning. And then to keep it from doing this, so if this is still on the wheel and moving, it has this tooth mechanism. You can see in there there's another tooth mechanism. So if I line this up, now it doesn't spin. It moves a little bit. The way they used to make them is instead of these teeth, they had more of like a friction clutch material that would wear out. And that's the reason I need to replace the ones on my drums. 
So it's been around for 18 or 19 years now, and it wear out. Right. I'm not sure if these are the original casters, but notice the brake style has this what's called a side brake. Well, these wheels may still be perfectly functional. You know, see right there, just like the other casters, it bumps into the caster. While these may be perfectly functional, they don't have the total locking. When you put the total locking caster up to it, you can see the difference as this brake right here sticks out, that bumps into the castings. And that's a problem. Because then you can't steer the drum when you're trying to move it down a hallway. So the first one is the casters. Again, I think I've talked enough about those. The second one is actually to do with the ratchet. And we'll get to that in another video, but basically it's a matter of parts wearing out. And then the third is actually the frame flexing. And that is something I am worried about because there's not really much you can do about it. But I have some ideas. Uh, things as simple as just making sure it's aligned when it's not under pressure. So if I take the ring off and the struts are all standing up straight and they're evenly spaced, it's probably not going to flex as much as it would if one of the struts is crooked. That's not always going to be the fix, but I can tell you from experience that if you can get things straight and level, they tend to work smoother and the flex doesn't show itself. Flexing on the frame is a problem because it can actually change the pitch, make the drum go out around, other things like just make things not work together. But that is something we will address. Like I can already tell this frame is going to need some shimming. And when I say shimming, it means there's going to be shims put in to get these struts to stay where they are, where they need to be rather. Well, my to-do list today was install wheels, remove hanger arms, and remove ring with a question mark. Printed a uh, 